I'd like to share with you something today from the book of Romans chapter 15. Chapter 15. So welcome. Hallelujah. And we're going to start with verse 13. Verse 13. It says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And concerning you, my brethren, I myself also am convinced that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able also to admonish one another. Amen. But I have written very boldly to you on some points so as to remind you again, remind you again, because of the grace that was given to me from God to be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering as priest. the gospel of God so that my offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable sanctified by the Holy Spirit therefore in Christ Jesus I have found reason for boasting in things pertaining to God verse 17 For I will not pressure or presume to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished for me, resulting in the obedience of the Gentiles by the word and the deed, in the power of signs and wonders, in the power of the Spirit, so that from Jerusalem and round about as far as Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel. And thus I aspire to preach the gospel not where Christ was already named so that I would not build on another man's foundation. Well, this is something that uh, we need to look in a different direction a little bit. Amen. And uh, first of all, I just want to say that you may not know or you may not understand or may, maybe you know that Paul did not build the church in Rome. He just wrote them a letter to make sure that the church was built, established well. Because somebody else was involved in building that church. And Paul was actually saying in verse 22, for this reason, I have often been pre prevented from coming to you. For this reason, because the Holy Spirit did not allow him to go. Because somebody else was doing a good job there. That's one thing. But do you remember what I was sharing on Saturday about Malachi? A letter to the priests. 
In verse 16, Paul says this, To be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, ministering as a priest, the gospel of God, so that my offering of the Gentiles may become acceptable, sanctified by the Spirit of God. That is verse 16. Did you read? So, what Paul is saying is exactly what we're talking about on Saturday here. And look at that, what he says in verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may or that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then he said further, further, in verse 18, says, I will not boast in anything but accept what God has accomplished through me, resulting in the obedience of the Gentiles. Resulting. By the word and deed, and verse 19, in the power of signs and wonders, in the power of the Spirit, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. What that means is this. I have fully preached. It means the signs and wonders and the power of God fell upon the church. That's what it means fully preached. Isn't it interesting? I want to show you something today with from Isaiah 55. You'll be shocked. By the way, this week we have pouring. Pour it's coming. Right? Let's quickly, very quickly, open to Isaiah chapter 55. And you may say, what Isaiah 55 has to do with pouring? You see, when you're walking by the Spirit, God can show you things. Amen. When you're walking by the Spirit, God can show you things. I don't know how about you, but I'm enjoying the Word of God. You can enjoy anything in this life greatly. But I think a believer, his greatest joy is the revelation of the word. Amen? Is the revelation of the word of God. That's for sure, is the revelation of the word of God. So in Isaiah 55, God explains... how he works and how he pours down his spirit and word into somebody else's life somebody else's life that will produce fruit and then he explains then he says just as earth or or actually just as um, rain and snow comes down to the ground so my word when it comes, it waters the earth, it waters the soil of your life, and it shall not return to me void. Amen. So God is explaining in Isaiah 55 exactly the work of the Word of God. This is why I enjoy. I enjoy so much. This is why I enjoy so much the Word of God. Because I know that the Word of God gets me to the place where I need to be makes out of me somebody that I need to be by the power of the Holy Spirit 
Why did we come to Jesus? To be changed. To be set free. Is that right? To be changed. To be set free. This is why we came to Christ. Amen. And the word of God is doing it. Because it says, as heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts greater than your thoughts. And then verse 11, it says, 10, I'm sorry, it says, for as the rain and the snow comes down from heaven and do not return there with, without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout, and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater. It produces. So the word of God first waters our soul, making it soft, because our soul, our soul is the is the ground. And then God puts that in that soil the word. And then the word begin to produce that sturm. It, it, it comes up. And then the bud comes on the sturm. And then it begins to blossom. And then when it's fully developed, it brings the seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So it doesn't happen overnight. Amen? But look what, what happens next. In verse 11 it says, So will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire. I wonder if you would like God to do what He desires in your life. Do you? Would you like that? I do. Which way it's going to happen? It's when we allow God to place His Word into our soul. The Bible says that the Word of God is like a two-edged sword. It's so sharp that it divides between the soul and the spirit. Amen? What does it mean? Because your soul and spirit are different. They're so much different that it will bring actually a, a, a separation between your soul and spirit to make sure that your spirit is filled with God and your soul is filled with His Word. Amen. And it says, it will accomplish what God's desire and without seeding in the matter for which I send it. So God is going to accomplish all the things that are sanded for. And look what verse 12 says. For you will go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth unto shouts of joy before you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Even the nature is rejoicing to see somebody walking in the Word of God. Now, why did I bring this verse to you? Remember in Romans chapter 15, what did we read there? Let me bring you back to this point. In verse 13 it says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So now we see that it's the same thing what God is speaking here. He speaks in Isaiah 55. You will go out with this joy, right? But that's not the end of the story. Read further. Verse 13 says this, very important verse. 
instead of the thorn bush, the cypress will come up. And instead of the nettle, the myrtle will come up. It says, and it will be a memorial to the Lord and for an everlasting sign which will not be cut off. Let me explain to you about these things that God is using as trees. Thorn bush and cypress are two different things. We were in the world very sharp and prickly. We were like a thorn bushes. Like thorn bushes. But out of, it, out of us, God is making a cypress tree. What is the cypress tree? Cypress tree was used for a couple of different things. First of all, it was used to make instruments. Because it sounds good when it's, when it's made up. Secondly, it was made the, the temple. Got it? So out of that, as it says, out of that thorn bushes, instead of the thorn bushes, the cypress will come up. Out of your thorned life, sinful life, fleshly life, terrible life, whatever it can be, you will become an instrument to God. An instrument. God will make an instrument out of you. And by, the Bible says that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, aren't you? The Bible says that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the temple was made from that tree. Cypress trees. Also, that's not the end. God is speaking about something else. I, I was trying to mention about pouring today, right? And let me show you something else here, what it says. And instead of the nettle, the myrtle will come up. Nettle is the same like a thorn. Same, same bushes. But what is myrtle? The word myrtle means hadassah. You see that? Yes, her, her, her Jewish name was hadassah. Myrtle tree. Ever, ever green. But myrtle tree, listen to this. Listen to this. Myrtle tree grows very well in the wilderness. It doesn't dry up. It doesn't need much water. It survives the wilderness. Hallelujah. This is why God said in when Israel was in the wilderness to make booths, the tabernacles, out of that tree because it doesn't rotten up. Again, why did God by His Spirit mention these two things that God is going to make out of our life? When we allow Him to bring His Word into our life with such tenacity, with such glory, with such passion. Remember what it says at the beginning of chapter 55. It says, Hell everyone who thirsts. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come by and eat. See, anytime we gather together, anytime we listen to the word of God, God is trying to soften your heart. God is trying to soften your heart to prepare your soul. He rains the water, He rains the snow, He rains that as, as we see this as a you know, this is just a, a type that God is speaking about, right? But anytime we gather together, anytime we worship God, God is softening our heart because He wants to deposit something into your soul today. 
and what I'm teaching you today, it is going to be a deposit that will bring some fruit again. Because the end of everything, what God is trying to make out of us, an instrument of worship for Him. Instrument, a temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? I wonder if you are interested. Amen? So, seeing that, let's go back quickly to Romans chapter 15 again and look at the scriptures. I love the scriptures so much. When God is opening our eyes, we don't just read them. We eat them. God's word is so, so glorious and powerful. So look, look what it says in verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. You may go out with joy and with peace. As it says in Isaiah 55. Who makes you joyful? God through His Word by the Spirit of the Lord. Believing that you will be abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, I was not interested today to tell you about the history of this chapter and to prove to you about Paul and Rome and everything else. We understand these things. Because Paul said in verse 14, very interesting thing. He said, and concerning you, my brethren, he says, I myself also am convinced because he never been there. But he was convinced that you yourselves are full of goodness. Failed with all knowledge. Look at that. And able also to admonish one another. Glory to God. You see, when you have a... Paul had this marvelous revelation of what God wants to do with his church. You understand? This is why he was very carefully talking to them about these things and issues. And I'm sure he was teaching them things that I share with you today. Explaining to them what is it real joy and what is it real, uh, as it says, peace. As God is explaining in Isaiah 55. It's an amazing, amazing uh, revelation. Why it would be peace and joy? Because we become in different people. We become in an instrument to God. A real instrument in His hands. Why did He choose this wood to teach us what He wants to do with us? Because he wanted to bring an example. Filled with all knowledge by the power of the Spirit. Amen. Preaching, he says. Preaching the full. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yeah. In verse 19 at the end, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Fully, it means, you see, a man who understands these principles of God, he will live by them. When we live in by them, that's what happens. The power of God manifests. God is doing great and mighty things that we don't know. Amen? Look at what he said. 
He said, I became a priest, not those that are mentioned in the book of Malachi. But I fully allowed God to work on my life. To fill me with all knowledge and power. Amen. So. It says. So the Gentiles became obedient to God. Obedient to God. And he says in the power of signs and wonders. In the power of the Holy Spirit. When we have understanding of which or through which God is teaching us by His Word, then we take this to our full consideration. Knowing and asking God for only one thing. We need change. We need His Word to change us. We need our life to be fixed. We need to become the people that are hungry and thirsty for God every single day. Oh yes, you'll make mistakes. Absolutely. We will make mistakes. But that's okay. As long as we learn and, and hunger and thirst and striving for the best. Getting rid of everything that is not good in our life. And I thank God for the scriptures. But always revealing to us that marvelous revelation of the direction of God's Spirit. To be hungry for Jesus. Are you hungry for Him? Amen. God is so good. It was just a little example to us that I presented to you in a few minutes today just to encourage your spirit. Because I'm going to tell you something. The people in the world, they suffering naturally. And naturally, it means... Uh, they suffer because, because that's what their life is. They don't even know. But we suffer many times. It's because we are attacked supernaturally. We do not suffer because we live in a suffering world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. I mean, the other way. We are not in the world. Amen? But what we're going through today is the spiritual, spiritual warfare. You've got to understand that. And a lot of people, they are trying to quit fighting because, trying to quit fighting because... They have not enough strength and passion and desire to move on and do what's right to win the battle. The world suffers naturally. They suffer, they suffer. And they suffered badly 
We suffer because we are attacked by all kinds of spirits. Because the devil doesn't like who we are and what we're doing. Do you understand? That's why we need encouragement all the time. You come in, please. Yes. We need encouragement all the time to overcome things. Amen. By the Spirit of the Lord. Overcome things by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And the Bible says that we shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the power of His testimony. Amen. Glory to God. Remember that we are always in that battle. Spiritual warfare. Always, always, always in that spiritual warfare. And the only way we can come out of it, the only way we can come out of it is when we apply the Word of God. This is why we need to stay in the Word of God. This is why we need to continually, continually worship Him and uh, lean to Him. Amen. It's a real battle. Hallelujah. A lot of people, they cannot overcome their sin and their life and their things in their life. Why? It's because the Bible say that uh, I hear, but not the doer of the Word of God. is like the one that looks in the mirror, sees the problem, walks away and do nothing. I'll tell you, I'd rather to apply anything that God says as much as I can, but to walk in the glory of God constantly. Always. I'd like to always be in the presence of God. Why? Because that's where my safety is. My safety is in His presence. Amen. When I'm walking in the presence of God, when I'm applying the Word of God, when I'm trying to live by the Word of God and receive revelations from the Word of God and apply, it helps me to overcome things in my life. Remember? God sets you free by the Word. This is why I'd like to walk in it. Not because of miracles. Not because of ministry. You know, the other day I said to the Lord in my prayer, I was walking and praying. And I came to the point, I look at the heavens, I said, Lord, I don't want anything in my life, even if you're not going to use me at all. But I want to be in your presence. One thing I want is to be in your presence. My life without God is meaningless. I'm not going to be a good father, a husband, a pastor, or neighbor, or even anybody to myself without God's love and presence in my life. Amen? I will not be. So God's power and God's presence and God's word is needed in our life more than anything. 
You may think that deliverance will come to you because you believe in Jesus. It will never come because you believe in Jesus only. It will come only when you apply His Word. Jesus without Word is meaningless in our life. Meaningless. The Holy Spirit without Jesus and the Word will never display His power in our life. Amen? I'm trying to let you understand. I'm trying to help you to understand why people becoming so passionate for God not just on Saturday or Sunday but on every day of the week and they can't put the armor of God down. Because it becomes their source of life. It becomes their actual source of life. Remember what the Bible says, in Him we live, we move, have our being. Amen. Hallelujah. And what I shared with you today about worship, it didn't come from my mind or heart. I can assure you that anything that I receive, even when I'm speaking now, I know God speaks. Sometimes simple things, sometimes more deeper, because God understands where we are. I don't take credit to myself. I'd rather not to say a word if I'm speaking on my own authority. I don't want to. Jesus said also, I don't speak on my own authority. I speak everything what the Father says. And sometimes God will give you out of nowhere such a powerful, influential revelation. As I shared with you today about worship. About why we speak with the tongues of angels. Not just people. Why we speak with the tongues of angels? Because in heaven, people don't write songs. They worship God in spirit and in truth. I told you that Lucifer, when he was good in heaven, when he was a worship leader, he didn't write songs. He sang them by the Spirit of God. God is not just listening in heaven. God is the creator of all things. You understand? God is the creator of all things. Don't you think He can create a song for Himself? By the Spirit? He is the creator. So when we begin to worship God in tongues, we begin to speak heavenly language. Not understanding what we're talking about, but our spirit worships God without words that we can comprehend. This spontaneous worship happens in heaven all the time. I heard the music that you would never believe. You would never find this kind of music in this world. Constant music without stop. Not, not even taking breath. It just moves and not just quartet. Not just quick qu a quintet or sextet myriads of, 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 of voices together you cannot explain you cannot explain where is it coming from you see heaven is the place where people are joined totally together they are totally in the spirit they all there's no hindrance there there's no opposite pressure that against you there's no force of evil. People are free. And when they worship God, even the flowers are worshiping God. Even the trees are worshiping God. That's why God has given us tongues. 
first that we may worship Him. God didn't give us tongues so that we just uh, hide ourselves in the closet and that the devil will not understand what we're talking about. Like secret, secret agents hiding from the devil. God does not hide from the devil. First, God has given us the tongues of angels so that we may worship Him with them. Amen? You must understand these things. Well, in the moment, we're going to finish this study and I hope you enjoyed it. But we're going to go into worship and prayer. Of course, the viewers will not be able to do that because we are not to, going to broadcast this. But ourselves, it's a prayer meeting and we're going to worship and prayer. And let's practice today the presence of God. Our worship, our services here, night, uh, Tuesday night meetings, are not just, you know, we're praying for revival. It's a wonderful thing. But they're also a rehearsal. God is teaching us how to worship. Amen? Let's just do that tonight. And thank you for those who are watching us today. Amen.